Hello and welcome along to another EFL manager special from the Honest Football Podcast. We are back and this one we have been waiting for for weeks. And we might still technically be waiting because I talk Karanka on Sunday lunchtime was confirmed by basically every national media outlet as having left his role at Birmingham City or been sacked from his role, one of the two. But there was nothing to come out of the club at the time of recording. However, we know this is imminent and there have already been talks about who they're going to approach next. So we are going to be reflecting on I talk Karanka leaving Birmingham and who we think is going to be in to try and keep, up, keep them up with the great escape. So Craig and Charlie are joining me as always. And Craig, I'll come and start with you because if anyone has listened to any of the championship prediction shows this season, they will know that your opinion of Birmingham for the resources they have and the way they've played this season is not pleasant. And I think, given the fact they're one of the lowest scorers in the league, you can't really be argued with. No, I think the people that obviously have watched our championship predictions have probably become an Aston Villa fan, but clearly I'm not. But that's... <laughs> I generally do think they're probably the worst team I've seen like all season. Uh, obviously, I watched them against Luton twice, and sometimes on TV, they have been awful. And I'm actually quite disappointed in Isaac Cranker himself because he's done so well at Millsborough, okay-ish at Forest. I think behind the scenes it wasn't pretty, but yeah. once again, I think we all expected Isaac Cranker to be defensively sound, and they're not defensively sound. They're obviously the fourth and bottom of the championship right now. It's been terrible. It's been got awful. Yeah, you're absolutely right, to be fair. And Charlie Craze mentioned the thing that probably I was the most vocal about at the start of the season, which is Ita Karankor. He had that stat before this season of the almost 50% clean sheet percentage in the championship. And Birmingham, they've not been the worst in the league defensively, but they're not a million miles off. And they've had some howling defensive displays. They haven't. They've all been late in the game. A quarter of their goals that they conceded this season have been between the 81st and the you know the end of the game. And I know we laugh and joke about it, but actually, if you look at their points per game ratio of first half versus second half, first half isn't the, isn't the worst in the league. You know, if you was to if games only 45 minutes, I suppose is what I'm saying. Birmingham wouldn't necessarily be in the position they're in, but that second half, I, for whatever reason, they just seem to fall to pieces each week. And it's very un to Karanka like. So on that basis, I I don't know if it is his fault or is his practice because. You know, he's, he's got a good record everywhere else he's been. And as you mentioned, for being stout defensively. So the, the squad definitely needs a massive overhaul. Was that his doing? How much stay did he have over the recruitment they had over last summer? I don't know. There's a lot of questions that we can't answer and we'll probably go unanswered. But yeah, the, the worrying thing is the, 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 the manner of the defeats and, and also, the, as I say, the timing of the goals is, is a huge issue for whatever's going to happen to the club moving forward. That has to be dealt with. And Craig, coming to you, talking about the previous jobs, which is something you've both done already, is it's no surprise, really, is it? We talk about this in all the manager specials. Middlesbrough, very comfortably managed off the pitch, very little input from the non-football inside. He did a brilliant job. And here, very chaotic off the pitch, and it's all gone wrong. I think surely you know the background of the club. To be honest with Birmingham, obviously it's been an absolute mess in the last 10 years. I think there was an article on BBC, obviously 10 years since the League Cup triumph against Arsenal, so, and you, you just see it, just feel it going down. They obviously survived from relegation for the Championship twice in the final day, uh, the two against Bolton and the one the away win at Bristol City when Harry Redknapp was charged for that. So they, they've been down there for a while and then I think the writing's been on the wall for them and obviously don't, you don't know the ownership of the club. There are all talks about points deductions of, over like French fair play. It's been an absolute mess all round and for Ita Crank, who obviously been at big clubs in the past. You think, well, why, why is previous managers getting sacked like so quickly? Why is this manager not lasting long? Why is this manager lasting long? I, I don't know if it's just because the job's available and, or maybe the standard. I don't know. I, I don't understand it. But when, I think when you get a, a club that's poorly run, you, you have to ask yourself a question of why did you actually do it? Yeah, and that's going to link very nicely to when we talk about the potential next man in a couple of minutes. But Charlie, the last one on Karanka, I guess the, the one question I haven't asked you guys is if you're surprised that he's lost his job, because I'm sure nobody is, given where they are in the table and how they're managed off the pitch. But what do you think in terms of the actual situation? Because you've got to look at some of the performances and say he's not the only one to blame. Yes, he's given up and he's lost hope, but he's not the only one that's at fault here, is he? No, 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 definitely not. I mean, actually, when you take even the weekend, they, you know, without going over our old stats, they had more possession, they had more shots. He has had stuff moving in the right direction occasionally. I, I think there has to be other stuff. I mean, there's a lot of vocal sort of 
uh, criticism of the board and particularly uh, Dong, who's in charge. When you see an influence from the board that probably oversteps maybe where their remit is, that has an effect on the pitch. Now, that's definitely going to have an impact on your practice and what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis on the coaching pitch. And then ultimately that then impacts what's happening on the, you know, on the, on a Saturday afternoon. So is it his fault? He has to shoulder some responsibility for this, but I don't think he's had the support of the, the club in terms of the you know the, the board and that kind of thing in the, not financially but actually just being able to do his job and we saw that in Middlesbrough like you say you know a, a chairman is very hands off lets the manager has have control over the side that's a great success over there Thomas uh, here where it, it gives the impression that he's not really got the full say of what's going on on a, a week on a day to day basis and this is the result of it so he has to shoulder some of it is he completely at fault no and the players I mean it's a very eclectic squad mix of some lads who are probably not championship players, if I'm honest, in the politest way possible, and others who I would expect to have done better than they have done. So, you know, yes, it's down to him, but there's, there's, he's not been helped along the way, I suppose, in the politest way. So I'm not, I'm, sh I'm not shocked. I'm shocked it's happened to him, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think he does have to take some of the blame. I think you look at, I think you posted the, uh, you posted us a post-match interview from the Bristol City game and he shrugged his shoulders and pretty much deflected the blame on him, of himself to basically the players. Uh, and it was the same thing for the Luton game. And you've got to take the blame because you're a manager, you pick the side. But the, some of the goals they've conceded, obviously, it's not, that's not his fault. The goal they conceded against Bristol City on Saturday was, I think, it was, obviously, the bad back pass, and then Everidge just smashed it straight at the, the striker and it bounced in. Yeah, it sort of just leaves a, a mix of the ugly across all sorts of parts of the squad and off the pitch as well. But obviously, he did say after in that post match interview that he wouldn't be resigning from the role. So we have to assume this will become either mutual consent or a sacking. And there's already been a lot of talk, boys, about who the new man might be. Now, the thing that interests me the most is the fact that the first thing that came out was that Carl Robinson was top of the list, the current Oxford United manager, and that there was going to be approaching the next couple of days. Now, can somebody tell me, and we'll start with Charlie, as Craig finished off in the last bit, as to tell me why Carl Robinson, looking at all the things you've said off the pitch at Birmingham, would go to that football club as a manager, or why anyone who's in a current job would? Well, I, I'll be honest, I think you could open that even more and say, why would anyone take that job? And I mean that in the politest way possible. It is a, it's a poison chalice. Whatever's going on there, I think they're going to struggle with. This is a potential for someone like him who's worked lower down the pyramid. This could really have an impact on your career in a negative way and, and affect you getting potential jobs higher up the league. He, he is a good manager. You can see, we, you know, whatever you think of MK Don's off the pitch, I'm not going into that. On the pitch, he's done wonders there and that, that can't be disputed. All the way up to the championship. For me, Birmingham is the complete opposite of those two clubs. So on his personal level, I'd have no idea where he'd go there, even if Birmingham was the soundest club in the league off the pitch. And they're not, but if, even if they were, I would think maybe is this the right move for them right now? So no, but then just to add on to that, I don't know why any manager who's in work would risk take, losing their, their reputation to go to there for what would essentially be a short-term contract. The only people I can see going to Birmingham in the situation and coming out with this with any sort of credit is someone whose reputation is so massive. And I'm going to use this as an example because he's on the list. Someone like a Tony Pulis, who's pretty much immune to that kind of criticism and negativity in the sense of he could do an awful job at Birmingham like he did at Sheffield Wednesday and will still be considered for jobs later on down the line. And someone who's not as experienced or as further down the pyramid as a manager isn't going to have that luxury. So for me, whoever takes it, we'll talk about it in a minute, it, it's going to be tough. But for me, Carl Robinson is possibly the least suitable person for that club in the situation that he's in and the club the situation at Birmingham. In. Craig, coming over to you, obviously, I'm going to ask you about a man that Charlie's mentioned and a couple of others too. We've got to bear in mind some of the fixtures they've got coming up and the position they're in, because this might only be a 10-game contract if they're getting in a, a short-term fix. But one of the men that's high up the list, as well as Tony Pulis, who Charlie's mentioned, who, for obvious reasons, we can see why he's there, is a former player in Lee Bowyer. And he's someone that a lot of Birmingham fans very quickly have said they would like to see at the club. Of course, Lee Bowyer knows better than most managing a club that's in a little bit of disarray off the pitch. And of course, he was down at the bottom end of the championship last season, albeit it didn't end well. So could he potentially be a good candidate for the role and one that the fans will give time regardless? Well, you, you have to remember Lee Burry is a former player. Obviously won the League Cup with him back in 2011. So to be fair, Lee Burry, I think Lee Burry has done really well, as you just said, considering the circumstances. He took Charlton up via the playoffs uh, two seasons ago in the championship, started well and then obviously faded away at the end and obviously what got rid of on the final day, but I don't know who actually come in. I generally don't know because it, Lee Burry is a good shout, but would you leave Charlton with 10 games to go? If I was him, I would just see out the season. Obviously, they're close in around the playoffs area in League One, so he, he could still potentially get promoted. So I, I wouldn't personally leave the club at this present time. Coming back to you, Charlie, I mean, Craig's made a very good point here, which is 
that they are a club with massive potential. They've got a big fan base, great facilities, and some good players at this level, as you've mentioned. But the ownership situation and the off the pitch mess, we've mentioned this at three or four already this season. Does this make the job more unattractive than it should be? I mean, there's no doubting that managers who would normally say, I'd love to go and manage Birmingham, are going to be seriously considering whether it's the right move for them now, aren't they? And it all comes down to the support, Dan. And, and what I mean by that is, is, is whatever your ethos, philosophy, style of play, whatever that's going to be, is, is that going to be supported by the people above you? And I don't think at the minute you could have that confidence from what we're getting from the outside looking into the club. And what I mean is, is like you say, as much as they've got some good players, the squad needs an overhaul. A club like Birmingham shouldn't be just surviving every season, every, you know, battling off relegation each year. They deserve better than that, and they are a bigger club than that. So you need to do something different. But to do that, you've got to be given time, you've got to be given the resources to do that. And at the minute, if I'm a manager who's maybe playing a slightly different way to the way Birmingham are now, if my tactics are different, and I want to bring in a, a, you know, a large number of players, I'm going to be looking from the outside thinking, I ain't going to get the support to do that, I ain't going to get the time to do that. Why would I risk ruining my reputation? The only positive is a potential payout. For me, unfortunately, it's the off-the-pitch stuff that's affecting the attractiveness of the, of the club to any potential managers, regardless of what's going on on the pitch. And unfortunately, that's what we say all the time. Whatever's happening off the pitch, only has an impact on the pitch. And this is another example of it. Absolutely. And Craig, coming back to you, whoever actually ends up being appointed, which we'll discuss your thoughts on in a minute, they have got possibly the hardest start that any manager will have had in these specials this season. The first four games, if they're in place in time for midweek, is at home to Reading. It's then away to Watford, at home to Swansea and away to Brentford. The sides currently occupying seven, second, third and fourth in the championship. And Reading are in the top six as well. It is basically... An impossible job, is it not? You couldn't get a worse uh, first four fixtures unless you want to put Norwich in there. But yeah. I, well, I don't think they might. They might have someone in ready for Tuesday. I don't think they will. I think someone like Craig Gardner will probably take charge of the game on Tuesday, and then maybe the new guy comes in for Saturday. But it's a, it's not the greatest start. You, you need to pick up points fast. Obviously, you, you've got ten games. They got ten games to go. You've got Rotherham behind, just behind them. You've got four games in hand over them. And Charlie, I guess the one thing we will say as a saving grace, we've mentioned they're going to be played in such a congested period for Rotherham now, being so far behind. But is the other blessing in disguise, perhaps that after next weekend, we've got the international break and they've got two weeks to regroup before that final set of eight fixtures? Yeah, I mean, it can definitely have an impact. Um, and I'm not just saying this. If Ike Karanka couldn't fix it, and, and he's had plenty of time, and I'm not just saying that he's like the Messiah, but he's a very good, experienced manager. I don't think having two weeks is going to make much of a difference. So... I think, all right, yeah, you might get a bit of extra work on the training ground, but for me, it's a recruitment issue. I don't necessarily think it's a tactical thing. They need to get rid of some. They're just not good enough. And I don't like saying that because I do genuinely like Birmingham as a club. And potentially, obviously, that may lead to a, being a short-term appointment till the end of the season rather than a longer one. But the final question for each of you two, lads, and it's a two-parter, and we're going to start with Craig. Who is going to be the next man in charge of Birmingham and will that person keep them in the championship? I don't know, I don't know who will want to take it. I can't see I can't see someone like a Pulis or a Hughes taking it. Danny Cowley, I think Danny Cowley won't want to take it now. I think he'll rather wait to pre-season. Agreed. I don't think Lee Bowden should leave Charlton now. To, obviously, as I just said earlier, I generally don't know. I've, I've run out of people. I don't think they'll survive either. But regarding who takes charge, I generally don't know. <laughs> but can Charlie go to his answer first? And then I'll, then. Come back to I'll let Charlie go first. Are they going to survive? No, I think whoever's in, I think unfortunately the, 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 the problems go too deep. But they're going to get in. For me, I think anyone, they're not, they're not a club who invests in managers. So the sensible thing would be to do, right, let's get someone who is, maybe like we said, I'm not saying you should take it, but someone like Carl Robinson and be like, right, if we go down, at least we've got a manager who's experienced in League One. Unfortunately, I don't think Birmingham's board's going to work like that. They're going to want to stay in and do it fixed now. So you're looking at someone who is a thick-skinned manager who's been around the block on that merry-go-round. So I'm going for one of three, and I'll say which one of the three. You mentioned Mark Hughes. Is he going to be the right appointment? No, but he's on that merry-go-round and he's available. Tony Pulis, potentially, as we mentioned before, I'm not going to go about him. Or this one, and this is only because it's just happened now, and I'm going to go for a man called Kenny Jacket. And the reason I say that is the experience he's got, he's just left Portsmouth. He's done this before where he's left one job, within a week he's back in another. His win percentage at teams like Wolves in the Championship was 50-odd percent. So is he the right man to take Bona forward over the next five years? No. Is he the man who could potentially, possibly, possibly be the only one out of everything I've just said who could save them? In my opinion, yes. Will he do it? I don't think he will. But will he make a good fist of it? possibly not in the right mind is going to think this is a potentially you know this is a really appealing job but those three lads are the ones that i named are ones who can cope with the flack of if it blows up in their face and it goes wrong and they get relegated it won't really affect their reputation it won't necessarily affect their chances of getting a job in the future as much because 
they're so thick skinned and they've got that massive CV of theirs that that little blip in the grand scheme of things. I've just mentioned about Kenny Jackett's time at Wolves, for example. That little blip at Birmingham, no one's going to notice that. Do you know what I mean? If you look at him objectively. So that's why I think someone like him, what's he got to lose to take it for 10 games? So is he, are any of those three probably the right man to take Birmingham forward in the future? No. But I just think for 10 games, possibly. I generally think it probably would be someone like Craig Garland to the end of the season, to be honest. Obviously, Birmingham legend. Maybe Neil Harris, actually, just come think of it. Neil Harris, maybe. But I think Neil Harris might want it to the start of the season as well. So I think it, I generally think it'd be an interim, probably something in the house. I don't, otherwise, it'd be a bigger payout to have someone just to the end of the season and then go a different direction again. Yeah, and I think the only thing I would say on Neil Harris, it looks like he's been lined up towards the Portsmouth job, which could be another manager special later in the week. But I'm going to give my opinion as well. I'm actually pretty certain on this one. I am so sure that Tony Pulis is going to get a three-month contract till the end of the season. There'll be no sort of expectation to stay beyond that. So I think it'll be Tony Pulis. After the Sheffield Wednesday thing, he's probably got to make himself a hero somewhere again now. So I think it will be him. And I think... You're not going to believe this. I think he'll keep them up purely because I can see someone like a Coventry or a Huddersfield drop in. Rotherham, we know they've got loads of games in hand, Craig, but they're going to be the only team playing twice a week the rest of the season. So I think with Birmingham's players, they've got goal scorers if they can get them firing. And if they play to their strengths, I think they'll sneak out of it. And that's all for this managerial special. If you did enjoy it, please do put a thumbs up on it. If you're a Birmingham fan, of course, let us know what's going on at your club. Who do you want it to be? And who do you think it will be? Because I'm imagining for most fans at the moment, that's probably two very different answers. Behind the scenes, we know it's problematic and we don't like to see any club in that mess, really. So we hope that all gets sorted. And hopefully from the summer, Birmingham can look ahead to a slightly brighter future. If you haven't already, subscribe down below for regular content from the Honest Football Podcast. Our championship predictions for the midweek fixtures will be up in the eye above. Thank you to Craig and Charlie for joining us as always. You can follow us over on Twitter at Honest Football 3 to stay up to date. And hopefully we'll see you next time.